morning, everyone. Good morning, Sarah. Happy New Year. Oh, thank you. It's wonderful to um, see each other, and uh, it's wonderful to be in God's presence and listen to God's word. And this morning, as we have read, I'm going to speak from um, Ephesians chapter 1, verses 15 to uh, 23. Now, this is a prayer coming from Paul, Paul the Apostle. Paul the Apostle is known for several things. Planting churches, receiving the abundance of God's revelation, and also we see him writing probably half of the New Testament. So he's known for so many things which are very important to, to the scripture, to Christianity, to the church of God. He is also known for great prayers. If you read through Paul's writings, you will find several significant prayers that Paul made. Some of them are request, some of them are wish, some of them are encouragement. So you see several kinds of prayers that Paul prayed for. This is one of the prayers where we find the wish of Paul for the people at Ephesus. Now, one of the key things that when I pondered over this prayer, what I felt like my understanding, my memory throughout the New Testament, we see prayer is not made in the sense of if you pray or if you wanted to pray, not that sense is running through the New Testament, neither in the Bible. It's always when Jesus had a discourse with his disciples, he said, when you pray. He never said, if you pray or if you happen to pray, or if you wanted to pray. Rather, Jesus is assuming that people need to pray, and they will pray. So when you pray, so that gives me the sense of understanding, prayer is important, prayer is important to Christian life and discipleship. And also, if you ask me to put that in, um, in a metaphorical terminology, I would say it's just like breath. As we take breath in and out, we live by it. So also, to live a Christian life, we need prayer. We breathe God's word, God's presence into us and out of us so that it will go into people's life. So uh, let's examine this prayer that Paul is praying in this passage. He begins the verse 15 with saying, For this reason, ever since I heard about your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints, I have not stopped giving thanks for you. In other words, he's saying, For this reason. Paul has a reason for making this prayer. What is the reason? I went back to the passage where Ephesians chapter 1 verses 1 to 14, you read a salutation, greetings, and then he comes to verse 11. In verse 11 he says, in him you were also chosen, having been predestined, and there's a lot of things being mentioned. I can summarize four reasons making the reason that Paul wanted to make this prayer. First of all, he is saying, you are chosen and called by God from eternity. Number two, he is saying that you are placed in Christ Jesus in a safe place. Number three, he says, you are sealed by God's spirit of promise. Number four, you are assured with an inheritance which will never perish. Now, these are the four things making the reason for Paul's prayer. Now, when you read through predestination, God's call, and all these big doctrinal things, which had gone through a lot of debates and issues and a and, and lot of problems, people today say, if you are chosen, predestined, why should you preach? Why should you pray? Why should you repent upon God? 
All these are the questions being raised. Look at Paul. You are chosen and you are placed in Christ. You are sealed and you have an inheritance waiting for you. Still, you need to pray. We are praying. I wanted to pray. You see, it's a, it's a different approach to prayer altogether. It's a different approach that Paul is making. His convictions are different. And he comes to this reason, and then he says, I'm going to pray, or I'm praying for you all the time. I never stopped praying for you. Now, it's very interesting. Uh, we take prayers as... Sometimes we pray when we have time, or we have a dedicated place, dedicated time, dedicated kind of group of people, then we pray. But prayer is something that is always can happen, even while we are driving without closing our eyes, you know? We, we can pray anytime. Prayer and praise is something like the breath that we take in and leave out. So let's look at what Paul is praying. Verse 17, Paul says, I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation, period. Paul's prayer is for the spirit of wisdom and for the spirit of revelation for God's people in Ephesus. Now, if Paul asks me today, Xavier, what would you like to be prayed for? What would be my response? My response will be, is that there will be a huge list of things, isn't it? I want this, I want this, I want this. Please pray for this so that I will have plenty of money or plenty different things. Well, we, can, we can imagine. You can imagine about your own personal prayers. As I imagine about my personal prayers, what do I pray normally? I pray for my wife, I pray for my home, I pray for my children, I pray for my relatives, I pray for my ministry, I pray for myself, I pray for those people who ask for prayer. Most of the time, we don't remember them even, you know? So what am I talking about? I'm talking about our prayers being centered around Things that are surrounding us, our worries, our anxieties, our fears are the focus of our prayer. That's common, that's normal. I'm not blaming any one of us because I'm part of the story. But look at what Paul is praying. Paul is praying for the spirit of wisdom. He is praying for the spirit of revelation. Now, if you connect this to Isaiah chapter 11 verse 2, there it is said that the spirit of wisdom and the spirit of understanding and the number of other things will be with Christ the anointed Messiah. So God's children are given the same spirit. It seems to me that God asked Solomon, Solomon, what do you want in the Old Testament? He said, I want wisdom. When he asked for wisdom, God may have given the spirit of wisdom and the spirit of understanding, which he had proved throughout his life, even though he's drifted away at times, okay? So what am I talking about? Paul's wish and prayer for the people at Ephesus is for the spirit of wisdom and revelation. The spirit of wisdom is one of the characteristics of the Holy Spirit. What is wisdom? Wisdom is act upon knowledge. Knowledge is information. Anyone can gather things from Google, gather things from Wikipedia, gather things from dictionaries and libraries and books and sources, but the act upon that knowledge is called wisdom. The Bible says true wisdom comes from God. So Paul is praying that people may have the true wisdom, which is the spirit of wisdom coming from God, so that they will make the right choices for their lives, given the context of tough times in life. And also they need the spirit of revelation. What is revelation? 
Revelation, the word revelation comes, the word, comes from the word apocalypsis, which means disclosure, unclosing, or, or you are opening up something to show what is hidden. In other words, Paul is praying, believers at Ephesus needs to have, or need to have, the spirit of wisdom to discern and evaluate things of their lives, and also they need the spirit of revelation to be able to see the real, actual situation of every challenge they are going through. Someone said, 75 to 85% of human problems are invited and interpreted unnecessarily. In other words, they are created. When there is no problem, we create problems out of no problems. Do you know how, what am I saying here? Yeah. That simply means this. Imagine when I came in this morning, it's just, it's just imagination, okay? It has no bearing upon anyone. So when I came in, imagine, imagine Martin was standing at the door. Sorry, brother, for taking your name without your permission. So he was standing at the door, imagine. And when I came in, he, imagine he was busy with something. The service is going to start. I came a little bit late, later than usual coming in of mine. And then he's busy setting up something and he didn't shake hand with me, or he didn't say hi. Somehow he missed. Not intentional. See, ever since that happened, I came in, just imagine, okay? I started thinking, why Martin did not wish me today? And then I can relate 120 things to that, saying, Maybe because I'm not looking very spiritual today. <laughs> Maybe because he didn't like me today. Maybe because he had some problems. Maybe because he had a fight with his wife. Sorry, it's all private. You know, I can create 120 reasons in my mind and mess up with my service and church and relationship with God, and relationship with everyone I have seen in here, and even my message. What am I talking about? I'm talking about a good amount of our problems are created. They are not real problems. And then we, we begin to react to that interpretations that we created. Paul is saying, this people, God's people, need the spirit of revelation in which they will have the actual disclosure of how things are. The real problems as they are. The real matters as they are. So that they will make the right decisions as they serve God. That's what he is praying. And then when this prayer is effective, Five things will happen. That's what I'm going to talk about in this passage. Once God gives the spirit of wisdom and the spirit of revelation to a believer, these five things will happen. That's what Paul is listing down in the passage. Are you ready? As we go, I'll ask you what is the first thing and what is the second thing. Remember this, okay? The first thing. In verse 17, Paul says, May God give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. Hello? We rarely and hardly pray, Lord, I want to know you better. When is the last, last time you prayed or I prayed, Lord, I want to know you better? 34 years, 35 years, 50 years, I don't know, your age of being Christians. We are Christians, we know the scriptures. We interpret it, we preach on it, we live on it, and we, knew, we know the in and out of scripture. We know how services are held, and we know what is right and wrong according to the scriptures. 
we tend to think there's nothing more that we can know about God. Friends, look at Paul. When the spirit of revelation comes, when the spirit of wisdom comes, the first thing is a renewed understanding of your Savior, of your God, of your leader who is leading you or who you are following in your life. Our prayer must be leading us to the place where we will know God better than ever before. It's like Paul said in Philippians, I want to know you, the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering. Do you know when he is praying his prayer towards the end of his life? Anytime he could be beheaded by Nero. Looking forward to death, being in house arrest, Paul is praying, I want to know you. Friends, this morning, if at all you make a prayer this morning or as you look forward to your future, Make this prayer in 2021. Lord, I want the spirit of wisdom and spirit of revelation that will lead me into knowing you better than yesterday. That prayers bring us closer to God. That's the first thing. That we may know God. Second, we may know the hope. Let's read verse 18. I will read it out for you. Paul says, I pray also that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints. Paul is saying, I want you to know your hope for which Jesus called you. You see the distance? He's talking about believers' present life where they are praying, or he is praying for, where we want to know God. And then the connection is the far end of the future, which is hope. He is wishing, I want believers to be sure, confident, convinced of the hope to which they are called. In other words, by believing on the Lord Jesus Christ, by knowing God the Father, and the grace that He has given to us through the Word and through Jesus Christ, our present life is secure. And now you have a journey to do as a believer, as a disciple. Face the future. And as you're looking forward to the future in this situation, friends, everything is uncertain. As we look forward to the future, we need a hope. Paul is saying, the far end of your life is lying the hope to which you are connected. Your present life is connected. In other words, the journey is safe, sound, and secure from here to that end if you are sure of your hope for which Jesus called you. This morning, every prayer that we make must be aiming for that to bring us to that assurance that reality of the future even though it is difficult to explain even though we cannot see with our naked eyes what is the future of God looking like even though we do not know many of the things that is going to happen in the future but the Lord is saying there is a hope there's a future, there's a destiny, there's a, there's a, there's a you know, kind of end that secured for each one of us. Let's make sure of that calling, that end of our lives. See, the prayer is making a different direction here. So first one, I said that we may know God better. Second, that we may have the hope of glory, okay, as a real reality in our hearts and minds, so that we will live well. Third, he is saying, know the riches of his inheritance, verse 18. Verse 18, towards the end of it, the, the, the later part says, the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints. Now, you know, we feel secure and safety that we have um, 
steady income, a lot of money, and oh, we have an assurance that my job is going to be secured, and so on. Other times, we have so many worries, so many anxieties, and we think about things that, oh, what will be next? But these are common human things that are important. I'm not saying you shouldn't be having these concerns about your job and income and all those things. But at the end of the day, about everything that we can imagine, how many of us are really excited to know there is a glorious inheritance set aside for each one of us? How many of us really know and how many of us really excited about that inheritance? Paul is praying, let this people at Ephesus may have the understanding, revelation of God's glorious inheritance which is the heavy resources available to the saints of God through Christ Jesus our Lord. The Word of God says He has blessed us with all the spiritual blessings in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus our Lord. This is the reason someone said, Though I am nobody in this world, my Father is somebody. He is so rich and He owns the whole world. And he is full of power and energy. And he made this deposit, this inheritance, which cannot be faded, which cannot be taken away, which cannot be shaken. It is a sure deposit, investment, my heavenly Father made for me. Friends, this morning, do not just look at your circumstances. Do not just look at your life today, but look beyond your life today. Look beyond your limitations and boundaries and look to the face of God and look through Jesus Christ, through the cross of Calvary, into your life or beyond your life where you will find the knowledge of God, the reality of inheritance and the hope that is lying ahead for you. The prayer is going ahead with the fourth thing there. He is praying for the knowledge of God, he is praying for the hope, and he is praying for the riches of his inheritance. Number four, he is praying that we may know his power. Verse 19 to 22, look at that. What an eloquent passage. 19 says, his incomparable great power for us who believe, that power is like the working of his mighty strength, which he exerted in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly realms. Far above all rule and authority, power and dominion, and every title that can be given, not only in the present age, but also in the one to come. And God placed all things under his feet and appointed him to be head over everything to the church. Now look at that. Two things. Number one, he is saying that in prayer, Paul is saying, I want these people not only to know God, not only to know the hope, not only to know the riches of God's inheritance, but also I want them to connect with God's power. And then he compares that power with the power that he is talking about. What is that power? He's saying the power that raised Jesus from the dead is the power given to believers. Friends, the power of God, the power of Christ, the power of the Holy Spirit, that is able to give life and energy to the dead body of Christ, is the same power is given to us so that we will connect ourselves with this power so that our lives will be energetic, powerful. 
offer and we will be lively and we will have that energy of life being excited, strong. You know, many times I have quoted this person in this pulpit and elsewhere several times and he's not with us. Do you know who that is? Our brother who used to be sitting here. Brian. Brian. Yeah, that's right. Every time I spoke to him, you know, when I saw him first time, he had one stick, walking stick. <laughs> and then when I saw him last, before he went to be with the Lord, I had two sticks. I had seen him having two sticks. And even with that stick, he would be shivering. <laughs> and then, even in that situation, he would have one minute, two minutes, talk to me. And sometimes he rebuked me very badly. But that's okay. <laughs> and I have taken him as an elder, yeah. as my father, yeah. and who is giving me some wisdom out of experience and uh, wisdom from the Word of God. One of which was when I spoke about some, um, uh, I don't know, some mentioned something about same-sex marriage or something, and pulled me to the corner and rebuked me very badly, and you need to be careful. That's what he told me. Yeah. What am I talking about? He is so passionate, and every time he spoke, he said this. Xavier, I don't have any, any energy left in my body to come to church. I'm shaking and I'm shivering. But I will come because of the power and energy that God had given me through the gospel yeah. that comes from the resurrection of Jesus Christ. That's what he told me. Yeah. Time and again he repeated that. Yeah. You know what? Mentally, emotionally, psychologically, he is thriving, or he was thriving, with the power of God. He was not willing to surrender. He was not willing to say that I stop experiencing and connecting with that power of God even when my body is shaking. This morning, that's what Paul is talking about, my friend. When you are shivering with the fears of life, when you are shaking with anxieties and worries of your life, maybe they are real surrounding you. Let me tell you, are you willing to make this prayer this morning? Lord, give me the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that I will be able to see things clearly. Then I will be able to connect with the power of resurrection. The power that pulled out Jesus out of the grave and made Jesus as, a, as an eternal icon for the rest of the world, challenging death and grave. This morning, if at all God gives you grace, once again, that energy to pray, pray for this power in our lives. It will keep us going. Let the power of God, incomparable, great power for us who believe. See, this is, this is where the condition comes in. For those who believe. You don't have to spend a million dollars. People are traveling all around the world. They can't travel now. They used to be traveling all around the world, even to uh, temples and different uh, you know, holy places, spending money to get peace and this strength. The word of God is saying it's free, but it is not cheap. It is free for anyone who is willing, but it is not cheap. It costs everything that God is. So this morning, friends, let's make this prayer. Lord, give me this power. The power that revived Jesus from the grave is the same power will give me strength to get out of those challenges that are binding me, shaking me, and giving me worries. And finally, and lastly, verse 23, you know the prayer comes to an end where Paul says, which is his body, probably I should read from 22, and God placed all things under his feet and appointed him to be head over everything for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him 
who fills everything in every way. I would say Paul's wish and prayer is this. Lord, help these people. Give them your spirit so that they will experience your fullness. So that the church at Ephesus, every believer in it, will experience the fullness of God. Have you ever felt that you experienced the fullness of God in your life? The fullness of who God is. Friends, as soon as we get into this, the excitement is unlimited. The hope we have is more hopeful. And then the fruits we have is more fruitful. And there is no limit to Christian life. So the prayer is, God, give us the wisdom and revelation, or the spirit of wisdom and revelation. As soon as this hits us, we will have these five things I mentioned. We will have more knowledge of God. We will have, have a, the more hope of God kept for us. We will have... The understanding of the riches of his intelligence, and we will have the power of God in an, in, a, in an incomparable way, and then also we will know the fullness of God. May God bless us through this devotion this morning as we go home today. Let's make this prayer. I, I am making this prayer. I wish you make this prayer as Paul is wishing for us that God might give us the spirit of wisdom, the revelation to discern our situations of life. Thank you very much. May God bless you.
learned from your word that the Savior had prepared for us. And I thank you, and I hope that we all, something impacted our lives that we will take home with us to, to remember, Lord. And I just thank you that, um, for Hayden and for everyone else, yes. and I pray for Diane that her surgery, again, that you know our thoughts, but I'm just remind that we should pray for her and that her surgery will all go well. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.